we are talking about a huge issue that is threatening the life and health uh, of people, that is uh, threatening the environment and poses a grave threat uh, in many areas. Welcome everyone to another uh, episode of this Dark Matters series of videos and interviews. Uh, dark Matters is a series that we try to cover the dark side uh, of the world where conformity assessment and accreditation uh, are not used and uh, we see about uh, all these activities that uh, we can fight uh, together as uh, people working in the right, right side. So uh, uh, today we will talk about the counterfeiting, counterfeited products that are smuggled uh, in the trade and also the use of counterfeited certificates. Uh, we'll see how big is this uh, in the world and how um, we can fight this uh, together as uh, networks of accreditation bodies and conformity bodies uh, worldwide. And who's better to talk about this uh, than our guest today, uh, Mr. Ivan Stavov. Mr. Ivan is the chairman of the European Risk Policy Institute. He's a fellow of the Australian Risk Policy Institute. He's also a member of the IAF, International Accreditation Forum Technical Committee. He's convening the working group on counterfeiting. And also uh, he has a lot of interest in different uh, fields like uh, strategic leadership, global risk policy, cybersecurity, uh, food security, data privacy, fraud and counterfeiting, IP crime, standardization, accreditation, certification, and so on. So, Mr. Ivan, welcome uh, in this session. Thank you for having me. So uh, let's, let's start from the beginning and uh, uh, for our viewers and listeners, uh, let's understand how big is the uh, counterfeiting around the world of products and certificates. Is it something like some people, few people use some counterfeit certificates and some of them counterfeit some products and try to smuggle them from the dark side? Or is it bigger than that? Is it organized crime? Um, unfortunately, this is uh, very big, even too big for our imagination. And uh, the intelligence on exactly how big it is, is, is not very good, but it's approximating that we are talking about $10 trillion of counterfeit and illicit goods moving annually around the world. So it is huge. It is going above 10% of the global uh, product and it is affecting all areas of economy. So we are talking about a huge issue that is threatening the life and health uh, of people that is uh, threatening the environment and poses a grave threat uh, in many areas. And all this to happen, it is happening because it is run by multinational organized crime. Right. So, of course, we have the sporadic small counterfeiters, uh, small businesses on the dark side that, that do some work with uh, counterfeit product and uh, using counterfeit certificates, but the huge volume, I would say over 90%, is uh, run and entangled in very in a very complex web of relationship, of economic relationship, transactions, supply chains uh, all over the world. So when we say organized crime, that means that these are big organizations with funds, with money, with technology, able to have uh, uh, products that look like real, they can have certificates that are difficult to spot uh, with the usual techniques uh, as uh, fake certificates, but also they may, ab may be able to create even certification bodies, laboratories. Is it at this level? It is. Actually, organized crime is able to build and run uh, high-tech uh, factories, uh, assembly lines, they have their own laboratories, they have certification bodies, uh, which are outside of the global trust of, uh, chain of trust. They have uh, suppliers, uh, transportation companies, uh, distributors, storage facilities. So it's a very, very complex uh, system. And uh, in addition, it runs together with the global flow of money laundering. And uh, the other illegal activities of, of transnational organized crime are uh, intertwined with uh, traffic of uh, counterfeit and illicit goods, um, uh, using this as a money laundering means. Mm -hmm. So you would see uh, drug trafficking, which is being moved through these uh, complex uh, supply chains and facilities. And then the money is moving through purchasing of counterfeit goods, 
which are then uh, moved to other countries, sold, and then the money moves uh, into another line of business of organized crime. And uh, in the recent years, uh, uh, some of this flow goes into um, fraud, let's say in Europe, uh, fraud uh, against European funding mm -hmm. and uh, investments uh, in uh, state infrastructure projects and so on. So uh, really we have an, a huge task uh, to, to be able to organize ourselves and uh, counter this highly organized uh, criminal activity in which counterfeit certificates and counterfeit protocols and documents coming out of the uh, conformity assessment business play a vital part to facilitate the movement of these goods across borders. Yeah, it looks uh, interesting, but also uh, threatening. And uh, this is something that I think needs a big um, a strategy to uh, to, counter, to counter this counterfeiting. So we can give trust to the accreditation bodies that are under Iraq and AF, under the mutual recognition, their accredited uh, entities. But uh, uh, to fight this other kind of network, the uh, dark side networks, what do we have to do? I think we need also resources and need uh, strategies and uh, working together, not only as accreditors and conformance bodies, but maybe with authorities and other uh, kinds of uh, um, official organizations. How do we see this fight going on? How can we really protect our users and the industry from such kind of uh, criminals? Um I've been in this field uh, since uh, 2006, working in the area of anti-counterfeiting, uh, anti-fraud. Uh, and uh, I can tell you that uh, one of the problems we have is that we are not coordinating sufficiently between business and governments and law enforcement. And uh, uh, we have over 100 international organizations that are stakeholders in this process and everyone is doing something about it. Uh, but then we have to improve the communication with law enforcement and we really have to establish uh, maybe with the help of Interpol and Europol uh, strong coordination centers that can take the full scale of options that we have to counter uh, counterfeit documents from their counter uh, the traffic of counterfeit goods disrupt their supply chains by all means that we have because uh, now we have a new opportunity that is knocking on the door and that is called digitalization. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do now on an urgent basis, we have to urgently coordinate in the direction of countering uh, the dark side organized crime that is uh, trafficking uh, goods um, through digitalization instead of uh, falling behind and having organized crime using innovation and digitalization to even further improve and, and increase the volume of counterfeit goods. So we are in the latest race that we have, and we have lost a few races over the past 10 years. And I think now is the time, and I'm seeing some, some encouraging signs that we are talking more with each other, and uh, we need to up our approach and our coordination and our efforts um, to uh, work against organized crime in an organized manner, because otherwise we will fail again. And uh, um, we, we definitely don't want to see our entire sector fail on this probably most important task that we have. We have to provide safe product, genuine product, uh, economically advanced product, uh, moving across the supply chains globally in all areas in clothes, in electronics, food and drink, cosmetics, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, toys, because we are the protectors of life and health of humans and of the environment. So I cannot emphasize more that this should be our prime directive. And then on the second place, we can talk about the negative consequences of IP crime and the, some losses that we incur as uh, um, in the tech sector. Um, I think the most important is our social responsibility that we have, that we have to minimize the ability of organized crime to use our tools to perform crime. I think you're right. Uh, we had uh, in a previous uh, video in this series uh, talking about the IPC, IP crimes and also the digital 
crimes uh, and uh, our guest in that video talked about the uh, digital uh, blood on the hands uh, of many of those uh, organizations because the fact that they have those cyber attacks and those uh, counterfeiting of a number of uh, websites and uh, um, certificates really harms people uh, uh, directly and not indirectly like some, some, some may think. So I think that uh, as you say, the digitalization and data is the real important tool in addition to the coordination of activities so that we can support each other from the bright side and have uh, these networks uh, put down and also always have a step ahead from what they are doing. As you say, they are uh, always upgrading uh, their tools, uh, going forward and using the money that they generate uh, from uh, these illicit activities to be more and more uh, counterfeiting and uh, bringing uh, illicit products in the, in the market. So I think that uh, also IAF and uh, I like they are doing a lot of work on awareness, uh, but also uh, there's new uh, projects like the database of certificates around the world, uh, like the uh, awareness videos and this kind of series that uh, we try to talk and uh, discover uh, what's happening around the world. So, uh, Mr. Ivan, what is your uh, advice for accreditation bodies and conformity assessment bodies in our network uh, to be able to uh, help in this fight and also to be aware uh, about their responsibility in, in this field? Um, what, what is important, what uh, we uh, are preparing in the uh, Task Force on Counterfeiting uh, at the International Accreditation Forum is a proactive uh, risk policy on counterfeiting, which is taking a strategic approach of identifying vulnerabilities of the stakeholders, of accreditation bodies, certification bodies, international organizations like IAF, ILAC and other participants, to be able to identify the vulnerabilities that can be exploited by organized crime regarding our intellectual property and our certificates and documents, and to try to close these vulnerabilities, which could allow us to minimize any potential risk that can show up. After that, to have firm, um, uh, well-devised uh, procedures for risk management for the remaining risk that has some probability and uh, to execute uh, efficient risk policy plus risk management on our organizations to minimize the threat. Then second, the coordination that has to happen between um, our organizations, the other international bodies like the World Customs Organizations and so on. Interpol, Europol, and other interested parties, as I mentioned, over 100. Um, in increase the, improve the coordination, improve the exchange of information uh, on cases that are happening around the world and cooperate with information that we have available to improve the, the, the ability to have uh, good results uh, in shutting down uh, rogue operatives, rogue uh, organizations that are uh, performing crime. Uh, through counterfeit goods, counterfeit uh, certificates. And then, least but not last, is uh, uh, the database uh, that I have created, uh, the search search database, where we are loading information about valid accredited certificates, which is crucial, and we've been talking about that over 10 years, 12 years already, uh, that it is vital to become part of the global community of information uh, for instance, Interpol is housing a number, dozens of global databases that aid 195 countries' law enforcement that have immediate access to these databases are able to verify information and that is hurting significantly the ability uh, for organized crime to use uh, fake documents, fake information, uh, fake certificates and so on. Uh, also, what is coming in the digitalization, we have to adopt it very quickly. Uh, we have several working groups uh, in various stakeholders, in various organizations. I was surprised only at the United Nations. There are over 400 experts working on digitalization of global trade, mm -hmm. working in various groups that they don't know about each other. We met on a conference uh, about a month ago and we were surprised when there are so many groups and so many people working in the same direction. And fortunately now, this is going to be synchronized. There are countries like Australia taking pilot projects uh, uh, with Brazil, some other countries doing pilot, pilot projects about digitizing, let's say through verifiable credentials, digitizing documents, making them unique, authentic, so they cannot be counterfeit. Uh, but again, we need to start talking to each other. 
We should not working in silos separately and then uh, coming up with various solutions that may not be compatible. We need uh, maybe the United Nations, which has uh, some of these groups uh, uh, with them, uh, take the lead. And we need to put together a global effort that we um, develop and enforce a global digital platform for all information related from the tech sector, plus all the relevant trade information, that if we make it verifiable, identifiable, and authenticatable mm -hmm. and unique with zero possibility to be counterfeit, we will probably kill 80% of the traffic of counterfeit goods. And that can happen very quickly because the technology is here, the will is here, we just need to get organized and make this a top priority. Digitalization, I think, is the top priority not only to counter the organized crime and the traffic of counterfeit goods that kills people and makes people ill and so forth. But this is, I think, uh, urgently uh, to be adopted as the future of our sector if we want to stay on board as the good guys facilitating global trade and making sure that the bad guys don't inject themselves into it. So the, the key word, uh, Ivan, for the uh, good guys, uh, work together, join efforts and uh, uh, follow the new technology. So this is something I think we can cover also in, in our next videos. Uh, we'll try to have uh, some uh, meetings and interviews uh, with uh, the tech industry, with uh, some regulators, and also uh, some of the initiatives that you have mentioned, uh, like the database of certificates around the world, and also the different United Nations activities. Uh, for that, uh, I thank you, Mr. Ivan, for being with us uh, in this interview and for all the information that you gave to us and for our viewers and listeners. Uh, see you in our next videos and uh, looking forward uh, to uh, uh, discover the dark side to help the bright side be better. Thank you. Thank you.